Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery about our planet Earth that suggests our planet is vibrating and ringing just like a typical bell. And this noise, if we could hear it, would be really really loud. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to Adame. But before we start, let's go back in time. Quick question, can you recognize who this is? This is the famous Sir Isaac Newton, probably the most recognizable scientific name around the world. I'm pretty sure no matter what culture you're from, you probably have heard of Newton. Okay, quick question number two, who's this guy? This here is Pierre Simon Laplace. And he has been called the so-called French Newton. He was born about 100 years after Newton, but he was such a brilliant man that even today his theories are still being proven and discovered and rediscovered. And this is one such theory. Laplace is actually known for a lot of different things, also a lot of mathematical concepts are named after him, but he's not a common name, simply I guess because he got lost to history and because, well, Actually, I think the reason he's not as well known is because he was also kind of involved with Napoleon and because of that, when Napoleon's name got tarnished, so did Laplace's. In other words, it's probably political, but that's not important. The important part is that he had a lot of amazing theories. He was pretty much the first to explain and analyze how the tides work and was also the first to very accurately predict and calculate the idea behind solar and lunar tides. So everything we know about tidal effects today technically comes from Laplace's early investigations. He was also the first to realize and also propose that the solar system was actually formed from a nebula. The so-called nebular hypothesis was his making and it took almost 200 years for us to finally be able to understand what he was talking about. And although it's not very commonly known, but he's also the first scientist to officially talk about the gravitational collapse and black holes. He used some of the Newtonian theories to realize that there is a chance that such objects might exist. But once again, it took almost 200 years for people like Einstein to kind of investigate this in more detail. But today we're not really talking about black holes or creation of the solar system. We are talking about something he proposed about our own planet. Something related to tides as well, something related to effects of various objects with gravitational pull. But in this case, it's not related to oceans. It's actually tides on the atmosphere itself. As you can probably imagine, the gravitational pull from the moon doesn't just affect the oceans and the water, it obviously also affects the earth crust, and in this case it also affects the atmosphere. And Laplace back in the days proposed that there possibly is a way for us to even see these effects in the so-called ringing of the atmosphere. And in a nutshell it sort of relates to the ringing of a typical bell. When you ring the bell, there will often be several different overtones in different frequencies that will kind of ring along with the bell. And depending on the structure and of course imperfections inside the bell, these overtones and these frequencies will always be different. Which is also why all of the bells sound kind of different, and at the same time it actually kind of sounds very pleasing to most of us. But what he proposed is that because of the tidal interactions, these overtones and these vibrations are also present in the atmosphere of our planet and sort of propagate through the whole planet. But because they're in extremely low frequencies, we're just not capable of hearing them. It's way, way beyond what the human ear can hear. And so the idea here was that this music of the planet was coming from the vibration of the atmosphere itself. But the only way we could detect it is by measuring the atmospheric changes in pressure. But because these waves have such a long wavelength, the changes in the pressure would be actually extremely slow, so it would be kind of difficult to measure. But why is it that we can't really hear these waves? Well, unlike light waves, for example, the typical sound wave that we can hear can be between about 20 Hz and 20 kHz. So anything below 20 Hz is inaudible to human ear. Some other animals can actually hear it, but just not humans. A 20 Hz wave is roughly around 17 meters or about 55 feet in length. Whereas the waves we're talking about here are anywhere from 1000 to 10,000 kilometers in length with frequency of several hours. So it's actually impractical for really any being on Earth to hear these waves. And if you could hear them, they would be actually very likely extremely loud. 
And so because of these really, really long wavelengths, we weren't really able to measure them until very recently, when the so-called ERA5 dataset became available after several decades of measuring pressure around the planet. This dataset is freely available to anyone, and you can go and see what they've actually found in the last few decades. And so when it comes to atmospheric and various um, climatic observations, there is really no equal. ERA5 is currently the best we have. And by using the data from this analysis, the scientists behind this paper were actually finally able to prove the two-century-old Laplace's proposition, that Earth is indeed raining. By looking at minute changes in pressure, they were able to see these very, very long waves propagating through the atmosphere of our planet, and as you can see in this simulation, they're actually pretty obvious. They're extremely large, they're moving really fast, with speeds of over 700 miles per hour or over 1000 kilometers per hour, so basically like a typical jet, and these waves are going around the planet non-stop and have been doing so for billions of years. But in this study, they've only focused on very specific ways, the ones with a period between 2 hours and 33 hours. But it's very likely there are also other waves they haven't really discovered, and there are probably other so-called ringing overtones in our planet that we still haven't really found. And although this does suggest that our atmosphere is kind of ringing like a typical bell, and is producing all of these different overtones that are currently inaudible to us, we don't really know if this has any effect on life on our planet, or if it actually has any effect on anything else. Right now, this is a theory that's been proven, but we don't really know what implications this has. We also don't really know how all of this changed over time in the last few billions of years, because Earth and Moon used to be much closer together, so it's very likely that the frequency of these waves was also different. And most importantly, we don't really know or we don't really understand what effects this has on the climate changes on our planet. It probably drives the weather cycles on our planet, but we don't really understand how just yet. And one of the types of waves they were able to identify here are these so-called Rossby waves that are normally used in trying to predict and understand the weather changes on the planet. And so, it's a pretty exciting discovery, but this discovery also had several discrepancies with the original theory, especially when it came to the frequency of the waves, and the theoretical and observed values were not really matching up. And the scientists quickly realized that these observational changes are very likely due to the extreme speed of these waves and the Doppler effects that were created by the waves as they were traveling really fast across the planet. So all in all, it's a very interesting discovery, it's definitely something that we're going to be studying for the next few decades, and most importantly, it will hopefully lead us to some new discoveries about the climate and the weather on our planet. But for now, that's really all we know. It's a theory that's finally been proven, it's a very exciting discovery, but we don't really know what else we can do with this just yet. Once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and also wants to know more about planet Earth as well. Either way, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find in the description below. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.